What is going on, everybody? It is Friday, April 13th. We've got a monstrous MLB slate tonight. Um, and pitching is kind of weird. There's not like a ton of uh, clear-cut stuff at the top, so I'm anxious to get into it. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by my fellow Osmo.com writer, Jake Hari. Jake, how are you? Good. A um, little, uh, little disappointed with how last night went, but... Um... If you played Barrios and Tropiano, you probably had a good night. So I uh, I stupidly swapped off Barrios because I thought he was going to be <laughs> like 80, 90 percent, but um, that wasn't the case, and he was he was what you needed for a big night. So um, hope you listened to me and didn't do as I did. Uh, <laughs> so the sunny gray negative five wasn't wasn't optimal, uh, but yeah, big slate, some weather issues, um, and then. One guy at the top that I think we're both gonna like a little bit. That's Garrett Cole. Yeah. And then not yeah, not a lot of clear cut stuff after that. So it'll be fun to, to dig in. On a side note, um when the music is playing, I'm usually like sitting in my chair dancing and I'm always a little disappointed that you're not also dancing. Dancing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, to I the to, to the terrible intro. Well, Terrible in the best possible way. Intro music. Oh, it's so I didn't infectious! Know you did that. I'm, I'm always just like bouncing in my chair. Nothing. So we need to find the intro music that gets you going at six fifty in the morning or whatever time it is for you. <laughs> yeah, six fifty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this. First game, uh, Nats and Rockies. Uh, Nats with a five point two run implied total. It's a 62% chance to win. Rockies 4.0 run implied total. Uh, Tanner Roark on the hill for Washington. Kyle Freeland going for Colorado. Um, I'm a fan of Tanner in this one. What about you? I'm not. I'm not really on Roark right now. Like if if I was MMEing like you. So once again, we we play a little bit different styles. So. Um, for M for MME, I think he's pretty good. I'd probably have some exposure to him if I had 100 or 150 lineups to play with. But at 8700, I don't think he's got a ton of upside, even though there are a lot of righties in this Colorado lineup. So I'm probably not in e either of the pitchers here. But you can talk about Roark if you want. Yeah, it's more of a Fanduel play than a DK play, uh, just because of that, you know, high implied win total. Um, I think he grades out a little bit nicer there. I don't like a couple of the guys directly under him, so he's kind of like the lowest of that top group that I like. Uh, on DK, like I would just I would pay two hundred dollars less and take Edward, Eduardo Rodriguez. Um, but on FanDuel, I think that it's a little bit better. I was surprised to see the Rockies bats, you know, touch up Geo a little bit yesterday, and the Nats not get anything going. So. I don't know if it's just like me doing really bad their due math in my head and thinking, okay, well that won't go the same way and you know the Rockies bats won't wake up again. But I can see myself having like, you know, a small percentage of him somewhere in like the maybe like the five to ten percent range on FanDuel. Nothing crazy. I mean he's not gonna be he's not one of my top couple or anything, but he's available for me on FanDuel. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I don't think, like, looking down this Colorado lineup, I don't think there's a lot I'm worried about with Roark. So, on FanDuel, yeah, I think he's a, a pretty solid play because he's got one of the best chances at a win tonight. Yeah. Pitching is pretty uh, it's pretty bad, actually. Yeah. Um, and so, for safety, I think Roark's fine. Like, I think he pitches pretty well here. I don't think he gets lit up or anything. And he's got a decent chance at a win, and that's really important on FanDuel. Yeah. He's very, uh, he's uneventful. Yeah. Like nothing, nothing, nothing sexy there. Like, he might give you six innings, four strikeouts, and an earned run or two, and, like, you're fine with that if he gets the win. Yeah. So. Um, I, I assume that we are both going to be liking the Nats bats pretty heavily here. Uh, yeah. I like, um, I don't know if I'm in love with the stack, because... Freeland's one of those guys that when he's on, he's he's going to get a ton of ground balls. And when he's away from Coors, then 
I like him a little bit better as a pitcher, or at least I don't love stacking against him. Okay. So, um, like Rendon and Zimmerman are two guys that I really like as one-offs. Like I, you, you can make a case for the stack. It's a over five run total, and these guys aren't super expensive. Weirdly, like Zimmerman's four K, Howie Kendrick's thirty six hundred, Rendon forty four, Turner is forty five, and then you've got Harper weirdly at fifty seven hundred in a lefty left. So you can afford the the Nats stack. I just think it's going to be a little bit too chalky, and I have some respect for Freeland limiting hard hits. Yeah. Uh, Zimmerman on FanDuel might be the best play of the day, and we haven't even gotten into any of these games. 2500 today. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. It's just, that's just a crazy, crazy low price for hitting in the middle of an order with the second highest implied run total, getting the righty-lefty matchup. Like, that's just... You can't ask for much better pricing for someone hitting in the four hole. Yeah, um, and he's always... He's always going to be hitting with Bryce Harper on base because he, he walks every single yeah. at bat. And so that's a nice luxury. Absolutely. Uh, lots of opportunities to, to pick up an RBI. Um, I think Trey Turner looks just as good on FanDuel. He doesn't have the same like ridiculous pricing as Zimmerman. But 4100 uh, at the top of this order, You know, again, that play for the implied total. Uh, I, I really like Zimmerman here. I really like Turner here. Um, do you think Bryce Harper will be under-owned because of the lefty-lefty matchup? Um, what's his price on FanDuel? 5,300. I think he'll be... Um, I don't think a lot of people will play him as one-offs. Like, I think Zimmerman and Rendon and, and Turner and guys like that will be higher-owned than him. Yeah. But I don't know how you really leave Bryce Harper off a stack. Like, if you're going yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4 on FanDuel, you're, you're not going to leave off... Harper. Well, I mean, you could, but yeah, I probably wouldn't. Neither would so, I. And just take the lefty-lefty and hope that they knock Freeland out and he gets to face a righty later in the game. So uh, I think he'll be yeah, I think he'll be under-owned in terms of the rest of the guys. Like okay. Zimmerman and Rendon and, and Turner will all be higher-owned than him. Yeah, I didn't even say I, anything about Rendon, but obviously he looks, you know, he looks great too. Um yeah. It's just uh, Zimmerman's price is just so bonkers on FanDuel that it's hard to ignore that. It sticks out big time. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. I don't have much interest in the Rockies, but uh, like I just don't love the pricing. I don't. You can talk me into Blackman. I don't really have much interest in Cargo at his price. Uh, yesterday's hero, DJ LeMayhew, I don't really want a part of. So, like, maybe Blackman as a one-off, but I, I can't imagine having much from the Rockies. Yeah, just Blackman for me. That's the only guy I had down. So, Cargo batting fourth, probably. Yeah. And he's 4,200. I think there's a quite a bit, um, t- quite a few guys that I would put ahead of him. So, for me, I'm probably not going to play any Rockies besides Blackman will be a guy I consider as a sort of low-owned one-off. Yeah. But that's about it. No, no interest in a stack here. Sounds good. Anything else you want to touch on here? Nope, that's about it. All right. Any weather concerns there? Well, it's good It's good hitting weather. So the next net stack will be decently owned, I would think. Yeah. Uh, Marlins and Pirates. Marlins 3.7 run implied total. Pirates 4.3. It's a 44% chance to win for the Marlins. Dylan Peters uh, going for Miami. Chad Cole going for Pittsburgh. Um, this is not a spot that I'm going to be grabbing, uh, Dylan Peters, that much I can say. Uh, Chad Cole's price on FanDuel is fine. Uh, it, there are much better options out there today. I, I can't imagine having either of the pitchers here. W- where are you at on these guys? No interest in either of the pitchers right now. I mean, Cool would be a guy, he's a guy that, that has talent, but mm-hmm. he hasn't really put it together. He's kind of a real hothead, if I remember, on the mound. So he, when he gets in trouble, he gets in, in big trouble really quick. If, if I'm thinking of the right guy, I just remember watching a, a Pirates pitcher. I, I think it was cool last year just going nuts on the mound. Uh, <laughs> Admittedly, but, I didn't catch a lot of his starts last year. 
I, I remember I played him a bunch last year, sort of early in the year. But uh, anyways, like the price is decent on DraftKings, 7,300. It's a good run total um, for the Marlins if you're looking at playing cool. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not he's not the worst option. Like I get it. I think he'll be really low owned and it's not a good team, not a team you're worried about someone getting lit up against. But the Marlins have been pretty pesky against – these stud pitchers like Syndergaard and DeGrom. So it makes me a little bit nervous to target against them. Yeah, if, if somebody was like, oh, I really like him tonight, I, I wouldn't actively try to talk them out of it because I don't think that there's a real problem with it. It's just not really for me. Yeah, that's that's sort of where I'm at too. I, I mean, unless I find something, then you'll see him in the Spotlight Pitchers article in a, in a few hours, but yeah, I don't really see anything that I'm in love with. He's just kind of an okay play, not one that I'm going out of my way to target. Agreed. Uh, hitting, I do like the top of the Pirates order, um, getting Peters. So something like Harrison, Mercer, Marte, and Bell would be fine. Um, I, I'm not wild about it. The 4.3 implied total for the Pirates, pretty low. Uh you know, for the day, there's a, a ton of decent offensive options out there, but it's something to entertain uh, as a relatively unique stack. Yeah, it'll definitely be low owned, and Peters isn't a guy that that I'm scared to really stack against. The only thing that is a little bit concerning is the run total, but that will also drive ownership down a little bit. And there aren't like huge names in the Pirates lineup, no. so the guys you mentioned, Harrison, Starlin Marte. And then Francisco Cervelli, if he bats fifth for 3,400, I like him quite a bit on DraftKings. He's always hit lefties really hard. So, yeah, those be the guys I'm with you I'm there. Yeah. Um, like, you know, Harrison and Mercer don't really have any pop. So it's not like the, you know, the most glorious stack ever. Uh, but they just kind of have the right pricing and the right ready lefty matchup that, you know, you can talk me into stuff like that. Uh, for the Marlins. I don't know. Probably nothing. Justin um, Bauer. I don't know. Yeah, no, no bats for me for the Marlins. It, yeah, that's like I don't. I'm just forcing it there. Three point seven run implied total. Um, fourth worst on the day, if I'm reading that correctly. I'd, I'm good. I don't think there's a lot here, and since it's in uh, Miami, there will only be what like. 4,000 people at the game to watch it. <laughs> oh, if that, yeah. It might be in the, the three digits. I was reading something yesterday about their uh, current attendance numbers and how they're they're down, and they've even had, like, big-time teams rolling through and they don't have anybody coming to the game. So, yeah. great start, Miami. Yeah, they're... Way to go. They're a disaster. All righty. Mets and Brewers... Uh, Mets with a 4.4 run implied total. Brewers 3.9. It's a 56% chance to win for the Mets. Steven Matz on the hill for the Mets. That's going to trip me up more than a couple times today. <laughs> Zach Davies going from Milwaukee. Um, I like Matz. I don't care to talk about Davies, but I like Matz. <laughs> At least on FanDuel. Where's the... Oh, I definitely like him on DK then too. Oh man, I think I think Matt's is a trap today. Okay. Uh, I think he's gonna be kind of a well, I don't know if he will be, but I think some people will talk themselves into Matt's on DraftKings because of that sixty nine hundred dollar price tag. Yeah. I, I I'm that that's a pretty easy fade for me. I don't really like playing Matt's. He had a two point two swinging uh, swinging strike rate in his last start despite eight days. So obviously not sustainable there. It's a weird, like those are two weird stats to have together. So it must have been better than zero percent, I guess. Right? <laughs> yeah, Chris Tillman. Uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, it, it's obviously not sustainable. I'm not saying he's going to have that kind of swinging strike rate for the season or whatever, but called third strikes aren't really something I want to rely on. And he's not good at holding runners at all. And this top of the Brewers lineup has quite a bit of speed. So I actually like a Brewers stack here. So uh, I do like the Brewers stack, particularly on FanDuel, if you're not playing Matt. Uh, okay. You know, you can go both directions there. Yes. I probably sound so, like, ridiculous t 
to listen to somebody be like, hey, I really like the pitcher, and I like all the hitters against him. No, no, you like, you can like. I just a don't pitcher. want them together, you know. Yeah. No, you can like a pitcher, but also like guys with high whips and guys that can't hold runners. They're gonna, they've got a higher propensity to get blown up. So you can like both sides of it. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's dumb to like both sides, especially no, no, no. when you're. It just sounds funny. Oh yeah. Yeah. So is he really long to the plate? You don't hear a lot of like lefty holding runner problems. He must be because he like I I haven't watched him pitch, but just looking at the numbers, like he's like top ten, like comfortably inside the top ten over the last four years in um, holding runners. So in in this one stat that I look at, eighty one percent success rate since twenty thirteen, hmm. like. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It must be really long. I don't know if he's really tall. I know some tall lefties have trouble with that. But um, like Lorenzo Cain, if he's in the lineup, Domingo Santana's 3,000 on, on DraftKings. That's one of my favorite plays of the day. Yeah, he looks good there. Uh, yeah, Ryan Braun against the lefty. Just yeah. sign me up for that pretty much every time. Hernan Perez is 2,900. Manny Pena is 3,100. And then Aguilar batting fourth probably at yeah. 3,200. So I like all the Brewers. There's a good combination of power and speed in that top six. Yeah, the the pricing on FanDuel is nuts. Santana twenty nine hundred, Braun twenty eight hundred, Aguilar twenty one hundred, Hernan Perez twenty two hundred. Like you can, the Brewers will go very nicely with Garrett Cole. <laughs> yeah, give me all give me all the Brewers. I'm yeah. not a Mats believer. Um. I like him a little like I like him on DK because of that price and he's going to be popular because of that price. Uh it just it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um and I do like him because, you know, the Brewers have a 3.9 run implied total. So signs do point to more often than not Matt's having a decent night, but the lineup is set up and the pricing is set up that the Brewers become an option in fantasy. Yeah. So I'll definitely have some Brewer stacks with, uh, you know, if I have Cole or, well, basically just Cole is going to be the one that would make it, like, real difficult, at least for me on FanDuel. You know, Grinky or Maeda if you're on uh, if you're on DK. But yeah, I'm, I'm open to that. Ryan Braun at 2,800 against the lefty. That's, uh, that's like, dream pricing. <laughs> that is, yeah. Like, he should never be 2,800 against any lefty, not even, like, Kershaw. He could be thirty eight hundred today, and they'd be like, "Hey, you know, Braun's not the worst." <laughs> like that'd still be cheap for him, I think. He should be over four K on on Fanduel for me. And he's just he's raked lefties for like a decade, yeah. or however long he's been in the league now. And what I love is that he doesn't like strike out against them like ten yeah. percent of the time. How long and has Matt's he been in the league? Do you have you don't have Braun? any? Yeah, do you have anything up on him? It's been so uh, long. He's like, been suspended so many times that I can't really, I can't track it in my head any longer. I would say like 2005, 2006, uh, 2007. It looks like. Okay, I was like, as soon as you said five, I was like, yeah, that sounds right. And then I was like, well, that's 13 years. That yeah, seems ten. really like long time. <laughs> so this is his 11th year then, 12th yeah. year. So. Yeah, and he's just been like battering lefties since 2005. Yeah. That, he should make that a shirt, Braun, battering lefties since 2005. Yeah, this guy. Braun, if you make that shirt, I want a quarter <laughs> on each one. Yeah, I'll get you a cut. There you go. Um, do, you, uh, do you have any interest in any Mets bats? Conforto? <laughs> yes. Conforto, Bruce, and Estrubal Cabrera. The, the stack is tough for me. Yeah. Uh, Davies... In his two starts, he has a 46 and 58% hard hit rate. So, well, I mean, got small samples to work with for this year, but I don't think he's some different pitcher. I don't think he's going to strike out a bunch of these guys, even though he's had decent results. So I do like some of these lefties for the Mets. As Drupal Cabrera is always underpriced. He's 3,400, can hit both sides for power. And at a second base position, I'll gladly pay that for him. 3,400 on DraftKings is... Just too cheap for me. Yeah, he's two hundred dollars more expensive than that on Fanduel. Because uh, I was looking at it when you said it, and I was like, hmm, I'm not sure I agree with that one. And then I looked over, and it was just this big gr- bright green box <laughs> next oh, yeah. to the DK one. I was like, oh yeah, that's because he's got a preposterous price on Fanduel. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the Mets, that's not. Oddly enough, the, the better stack is the Brewers here. Um, I don't really want to mess around with any Mets outside of Mats. God, too many. He needs to change his last name or just turn it into Mets. <laughs> Make it easier. Uh, oh, Jay Bruce is 4,000 too, and he's been crushing the ball to start the season. So he's top 25 in average exit velocity. So I love Jay some... Bruce just like in general. I hate that he's on the Mets. That like so I, I I can't like him as much as I would want to, but <laughs> I've loved him since like prospect days. I just always wanted him to be like one step above what he is for a career. He's a he's a stud. I like him. Yeah, Pretty like aggressive. he's been he's had a really nice career. Um, yeah. I always just wanted like the next notch from him. Yeah, it's, not that it matters. <laughs> Rays and Phillies, uh, 4.0 run implied total for both teams. For those that don't understand what that means, it's a 50-50 game. Uh, Jake Faria on the hill for the Rays. Vince Velasquez going for Philly. Um, you can. Uh, I'm fine with Velasquez. I like. I like him generally. Um. Faria's price is, you know, as low as it's going to get, basically. So, in a weird way, I like both pitchers. I don't know what I don't know how to like. I think that fifty-fifty four-run and four-run line is spot on. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So I don't like Faria. He had pounded in his last start against the Red Sox. Uh, his first two starts are actually against the Red Sox. The numbers are pretty bad, and we were talking before the show about uh, his his swing strike rate and his whiff rate is just yeah. super super low. Like he is one hundred and forty sixth out of one hundred and fifty one qualified pitchers for the split. I have so over a hundred pitches thrown for starters this year. Okay, and so he's got room to go down. Yeah, yeah, he can only go down a couple spots. He's in Chris Tillman territory Whew. and Martin Perez territory. We'll get this. So he. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll get to Tillman. Um, <laughs> so he's just not missing any bats. Not someone that I want to play. And I actually do like some of these Phillies, even though it's not a good park. Um, so I like Carlos Santana quite a bit. Odubel Herrera and then Reese Hoskins for fifty two hundred. Like I'll pay that. He's he's been awesome to start the year. Yeah. And he can hit both sides. Uh, obviously, you prefer him against lefties for that price. But if that two, three, four Philly stack isn't going to be used and Faria is going to be popular, which I think he might be on DraftKings for 5,800, then I'll gladly take the other side of that, take some Phillies bats. Yeah, I think Santana looks really good here. Um, just pricing wise, he's in a, in a really nice spot. Um, I just worry about, like, I think this could be a case where Faria picks up some Ks. I'm not too worried about Hernandez or Herrera. Um, just cause they don't have a ton of pop in the bat. It's basically just get through Santana and limit Hoskins. Yeah, he can. So, yeah. I, like, I don't like either of the guys a lot, but I can see a path to them, particularly Faria on DK. Uh, I don't think that I'd be able to, like, I mean, on a night like tonight. You can basically take your pick of bats if you try to roster Faria on FanDuel, but that's he's it's just too little. Like there's, I, I don't see the the giant upside in taking him on FanDuel. I can get there on Velasquez, um, just because I hate the Rays lineup. <laughs> I like I like Velasquez a little bit. He's seventy nine hundred, not a great price for him. Uh, he can strike out righties at a pretty decent rate, and he gets three in a row in the middle of the lineup, and I'm not super scared of Span or Kiermaier, yeah. power at least. So I think you can make a case for Velasquez, but he's like one of those Chad Cool guys where I'm just – like he's an okay play. It's a decent run total in a good park, but I'm not crazy about playing him. So I have no clue who my, my SP2 is going to be right now. But Velasquez is at least in consideration – the Rays only have two guys with a f slugging percentage over 400 in their lineup today from steamer projections. 
Ugh, there. Two. That's, I don't, one, two, three, eight, I mean this, 292, 296, 281, 302, 303, those are all on base percentages. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. Like they just have no pop. No, they have no anything. They're they're a bad team right now. Yeah. Um, I'm in for a little bit of Velasquez, I think. Uh, it'll be muted a little bit because of my irrational love for Eduardo Rodriguez today. But understandable. Yeah, uh, at his price, it's it's insane. Um, but I think Velasquez looks just like like he looks really nice for this matchup. If the Rays really run out this lineup. Um, I'll, I'll have a solid amount of Velasquez. Uh, he's a great value at this point. I'd like to see that line move a little bit. I'm a little concerned as to why it's as even as it is. Yeah, I'd like to see that a little bit more in Velasquez's favor. Yeah, But maybe it has something to do with the bullpens. I haven't checked to see uh, bullpen data in, in a few days. So maybe the Phillies don't have a great bullpen. I doubt they do. I don't have much interest in any one-off hitters here outside of Santana. And yeah. then uh, if I needed to take one hitter out of the Rays lineup, I would take Kiermaier. That would be my two, Kiermaier. Yeah, but it's just, it's not really that great of a game for offense. No, it's it's really not. The, I like the 2-3-4 for the Phillies just as a low-owned yeah. little mini stack there, but that's about right. it. Tigers and Yankees. Tigers, 4.1 run implied total. Yankees, 4.6. That's 55% chance to win for the Yankees. Is it fears or fires? Fires. Okay. Mike Fires (laughs) going for the Tigers. Jordan Montgomery going for the Yanks. Uh, I don't really have any interest in Montgomery on either site. Um, I definitely don't have any interest in fires on FanDuel. Price is a little bit better on DK, but I don't think this is a spot to grab any pitching. What about you? Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with Montgomery. Like, I want him to be, I want him to be a thing, and <laughs> like a lot of people do. I know Yankees fans are really excited about him, and he is really talented. He, um, like, he's been okay in his first couple starts. The strikeout numbers aren't really where you want to see. The walks is where he struggles with, and he's gonna get possibly eight or nine right-handed bats in this Detroit lineup. There's even some rain to worry about. So, I like, right now, I don't think that I have much interest in him. If the weather clears up and maybe we see a, um, a favorable Detroit lineup, then, okay, like, I'll, I'll take a shot on Montgomery for 7,100. But I'm, I'm scared of, like, Cabrera, Castellanos, James McCann even, Candelario. Those guys are – those guys can all hit and all from the right side too, which, which worries me for Montgomery. So. Yeah, uh, it, you know, I'm I'm concerned of the four point run run implied total for the Tigers, but the top five on FanDuel for a stack looks really nice for the Tigers. Dixon Machado, twenty five hundred. Candelario, twenty three hundred. Miguel Cabrera, three thousand. Castellanos, thirty two hundred. Vmart, twenty three hundred. Like that's another Tiger stack with Garrett Cole type play for me on FanDuel, yeah. where there's just, they're they're pretty underpriced for getting a ton of righty-lefty matchups. To get Miguel, like, I don't care how long Miguel Cabrera has been in the league, uh, to get him at 3,000 uh, against a lefty is something that I'm just in for. I, I might just build a lineup out of the ridiculous nonsense we talk about over all of these games, so, and get Ryan Braun in there, and get Miguel Cabrera in there, it'll be like the 2009 All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like they're just underpriced. Like Castellanos, I wouldn't target him individually, but if I'm grabbing the other four guys, he can come along for the ride. Oh man, I, I like Castellanos. I like his price on Fanduel. Yeah, thirty two hundred. Yeah, give me some of that. Yeah. Um, if you're not playing Montgomery, and uh, have we we didn't talk about fires yet, did we? Um, not really. He's he bounces back and forth like he's. He's bullpen, he's starter, he's kind of like a, a really not awesome Swiss Army knife. <laughs> right. So he um, he had a pretty good outing in his first start against the White Sox, which is a pretty good matchup for him. A lot of righties. Um, 
the Yankees have a lot of power, obviously. Um, I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, and, I, they've, they've got two guys that I, I think hit one or two from time to time. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I mean, I, I don't think I want to play fires here, especially with a little bit of weather cons- concerns here in Detroit. But I don't know that I want to necessarily stack against him. So it would be um, Judge or Stanton one-offs. Like, take your pick with those guys. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you're going to decide between them this year, um, playing one over the other. Um, and then maybe Brett Gardner is 3800 on DraftKings. I guess he just – his price just doesn't go up, left <laughs> batting leadoff. Mm-hmm. So. I think it's really interesting that Aaron Judge's slugging percentage projected from Steamer is under 500. Yeah, like and under 500. Six tw- yeah, it's four, 498 for Judge. Six, What's Stanton? Tw- 628 for Stanton. I mean, I get like those are like the kind of tiebreakers breakers I would look at, or if there's a big pricing discrepancy on one site. Same because... price on both sites. Yeah, <laughs> forty seven hundred on Fanduel on both sites, and then Stanton by a hundred bucks on DK. Yeah, so, that's crazy to me. I would not have expected Judge's slugging to be under five hundred. I don't know. I mean, he's just got massive power. So, fire yeah, I mean, when it when it goes, it goes. I'm pretty uh, sure Fires had a, a home run problem in some of his um, in his career at, at some point. I don't know if he's sort of fixed that. If he's a little bit of a different pitcher, but. Well, he's the got number... the, the projected five FIP, so I'm going to assume he's got like more than just a home run problem. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I don't hate a Yankee stack here either. No. Like, I, I'm never going to hate a Yankee stack against a average to below average pitcher. No, not at all. You can go, you can grab whatever you want here. I don't love Gregorius. He's just too expensive for me. But, you know, in the middle of that order, if he's coming with the rest of the guys, it's fine. Um, a Yankee stack would be one that I'd have going with like Eduardo Rodriguez or Vince Velasquez or something. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of a fun game, actually. I'm fine not having any of the pitching, but there's a ton of hitting to to go after. Yeah, just keep an eye on the weather. That's that's the only thing. Yeah, for sure. All righty, here we go. This one should be fun. Red Sox and Orioles. Red Sox. Five point nine run implied total. Orioles four point one. It's a sixty six percent chance to win for the Red Sox. It's as if they moved Coors Field to Boston. Um, that's a, just a gigantic run total. Eduardo Rodriguez, uh, the bell of the ball for me today on the hill for Boston. Chris Tillman, the whatever the opposite of the bell of the ball is, uh, coming from Baltimore. Um, I couldn't love Eduardo Rodriguez anymore on FanDuel. 6,600. Uh, he will be almost assuredly my highest owned pitcher. Um, I think he looks good still on DK. Uh, my question is, how many lineups are you going to put Chris Tillman in? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a big old zero for me, for yeah. Tillman. He... So we've stacked against him the first couple times that he's been pitching this year. He survived against the Astros and Yankees, and now he gets the Red Sox. And <laughs> Dude's I, getting I think, a brutal start to the season. Yeah, but he's he just survived, so I don't know if people think he's like good now or whatever, but he like there's no reason that he shouldn't be getting blown up, especially by lefties. He's got a 63% hard contact rate against lefties this year, and he's – like at some point he's just gonna get blown up because this guy he's awful yeah. and like Mookie Betts yeah he's a righty but Tillman's gonna get hit hard by righties too Benintendi one of my very favorite plays on the entire slate Mitch Moreland for thirty three hundred um, Devers for forty one hundred these guys are like one through six is what I'm looking at is Bradley six for you too yeah. Okay, yeah, one through six is what I want to play here for the Red Sox. Yeah, Literally any combination, I think they're all awesome plays. Like, Red Sox have to be one of the chalk stacks of the night, I would yeah. think. Oh, but the, the without question, they're the chalk stack of the day. Yeah, six run total, and, like, they might reach that in the second inning. Because I, I, Tillman is awful. There's nothing that says that he should be pitching okay even. No. Mitch Moreland... 
2400 on FanDuel. Yes, please. Yeah. Jackie Bradley in the six hole, 2600. Like, I'm in. I'm not even talking about their best bats. Like, JD Martinez, I don't yeah, care that I'll... it's righty righty. He's only 4,000. Um, I couldn't be more in. Like, this is just. You just throw a dart, grab some Red yeah. Sox. You'll be fine. Me, all of them. Like, play on DraftKings so you can play five of them. Yeah. Like, they just. I don't know. I, I'm gonna end up with at least a couple Red Sox bats. If they're gonna if they're gonna be chalky and out of control, then okay. Like if they're gonna be forty percent on a thirteen game slate or whatever. Then yeah, okay. Now you can think about not playing the whole stack. But <clears throat> I don't know how you don't have multiple Red Sox stacks if you're making five lineups or ten lineups or something like that. Yeah, the, there, there's a very good reason for their chalkiness tonight. It's because. Everyone that looks at this has to be like, well, they're obviously going to smash Chris Tillman. Yeah. You can't should. come to a different conclusion than that. Yeah. Tillman, 5.9K per nine projected from Steamer. Four walks. I've never seen those two numbers be so close to each other for a guy who was, like, good at one point. Yeah, you got a huge contract a few years ago, I think. Yeah. 5.76 projected FIP. <laughs> that's just like it's so high it's so high I, yeah i couldn't avoid him more um so just get anything you want from the red Sox and feel great about it um yeah. for the orioles i don't have any one-off stuff that i'd be looking to grab um i don't love machado's price on fanduel I guess he's probably okay as a one-off on uh, on DK, but like I don't really want to touch any part of the Orioles tonight. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm looking to target the Royal, uh, the Orioles. Sorry, um, Rodriguez is 8,500 on DraftKings. It's it's kind of like the Jordan Montgomery thing. He's gonna get a lot of righties. Yeah. So. If he's going to be chalky, like I think it's a pretty good spot for Eduardo Rodriguez, but I like 8500, you're going to you're going to need him to do some things. He he had a really classic Eduardo Rodriguez start in his first start. He went 3 and 2 thirds, 92 pitches, Ooh. 7 strikeouts and then two walks like he he left with the bases loaded if I remember correctly. So he gets himself into trouble with control sometimes. Got really good stuff, can make guys miss. Um like this is a very impatient Orioles team. Um, I don't know. I don't want to like stack against Eduardo Rodriguez, so I might just fade that matchup altogether. I don't know if Rodriguez is going to be chalky, but he's a guy I'm I'm really on the fence on right now. No, I, I get that. And with his price, he's it's dramatically different on DK. Um, he's in the lower half of pricing in a game where, like. He's as sure of a win potential mm. as anybody could be on the board. And for yeah. that, at 6,600 on FanDuel, with his ability to miss bats, like the upside for him at that price is ginormous. Right. Which is very much not a word, but I think it, it explains this perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I'm and in I, for him. He's gonna, I can't wait to throw this stuff in Cruncher and see how much it comes up. Yeah, he should come up high in, in all the models, probably on both sites. Yeah. So I don't think he's a bad play at all, but I can make a pretty good case for the fade here as well. Yeah, on DK in particular, yeah, uh, you mm -hmm. can make that case really easy. Yeah. All righty. Indians and Blue Jays, uh, 4.7 run implied total for the Indians, 4.3 for the Jays. Mike Clevenger going for the Indians, 54% chance to win. Marcus Stroman going for the Jays. Um, Clevenger is fine for me on FanDuel, fine for me on DK. Uh, it's not a guy that I'm definitely going to be targeting. And then uh, Stroman is someone that I will absolutely not have any part of. Uh, were you looking at either of these guys? I, I thought I was going to like Clevenger. But his his plate discipline and his whiffs are a little bit down um, for a ninety five hundred dollar pitcher. Um, it could be the tough matchups for 
Clevenger in his first couple starts against the Angels. KC wasn't that tough, but the Angels are going to be a tough matchup for anyone yeah. this year. Uh, so 9,500, it's just like, um, it's probably just a stay away. The, the team totals scare me away a little bit of both of these guys. So I think there are a couple bats that I like in this Ooh. game. Okay. Um, against Stroman, it would be like Jose M- Ramirez, but the pricing is tough for me to get behind here with with all these other great options. You got the Red Sox, you got the Astros, you got um, some other guys that are like even like the Phillies guys. I think are are priced a little bit better than these Cleveland bats. So it's tough for me. I like the spot. I just don't like the price. Yeah, I could get to Lindor. Um, that's about it. I don't really love much of anything there. And then on the Jays, you know, I'm good with. I, I'd take Granderson in a lefty righty matchup pretty much always, especially if he's leading mm-hmm. off. But other than that, I, like, this just doesn't feel like a game where I really need to have much of any of it. Yeah, like I just I respect both pitchers, especially against righties or both of them. Yeah. So maybe a lefty one off bat or two, but I'm not really looking to stack either one of them the no. weather is pretty decent for hitting there's a little bit of wind blowing out to right so maybe lefties get a little bit of a boost but i don't think i'm going crazy on anything in this game no nope, i'm with you that one was easy yeah um hmm i just had an idea for something i want to do on this sheet but it's neither here nor there <laughs> astros and rangers um Astros with a 5.1 run implied total. Rangers 3.4. It's a 68% chance to win for the Astros. Garrett Cole going for Houston. Uh, Cole Hamels going for Texas. Um, I don't want to say that I like Garrett Cole a lot here. Because, you know, you're, you're paying up the entire way. He's the most expensive pitcher on both sites. But to me, he's the best of the high end plays today of any of the pitching. Um, I'll have, he'll be my second, like him and Eduardo Rodriguez will take up most of my ownership. Uh, or at least that's my expectation. Where you at on Cole? Is he your one? Yeah, he's my one. Yeah. He He's like far and away the best, just raw points play on the slate, I think. Yeah. Uh, I have no problem paying 12,100 for him on DraftKings. The Rangers have a ton of strikeouts outside of um, Adrian Beltre in their lineup, like Rua, Drew Robinson, if he's in the lineup, um, Gallo, we know what Gallo's deal is, Chu, um, Mazar, all strikeout over the average against righties. So Garrett Cole is far and away my number one. Yeah. Um, it's just going to be a, a question of whether or not I can afford him with all these bats I want to pay up for. Um he went seven innings at 11 Ks in both of his starts to start the season. That'll do it. 20% swing strike rate um, in his first start, which was against the Rangers. And now no Elvis Andrews. Is he hurt? I didn't see that. Uh, yeah, he, he's bro- not- he broke something, didn't he? Oh, man. So that's even a bigger boost for him. I could uh, be wrong, but I'm almost positive I saw that he broke something. Well, if he's not in the – yeah, he should be in the lineup if he's not hurt. So I'll, I'll do a quick Google search. Yeah. I'm oh, trying, my God. Broken to right you. elbow. Broken elbow. Yeah. Cool. I remember seeing the tweet yesterday. Man, that sucks for him. Uh, I like I like Andrews as a player, and I, I respect him um, as a hitter. So Another great former Braves shortstop. We just keep churning them out and sending them <laughs> somewhere else. Yeah. Send them out. Send them, send them to the AL. Yeah. Uh, Ronald Guzman. Supposed to get the start for the Rangers today. Uh, first base prospect. Um, I think first oh. base prospect. Could be wrong there. Uh, I've got him in, slotted in the seventh spot. He's not available on either site from a pricing perspective, but 318 okay. on base percentage, 401 slugging projected from Steamer, which is not bad for a guy that has no, no major league experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm playing Cole. Uh, if I can, I'll try to get in a, a cheap. SB2 or, or mid-tier SB2 would get some value bats because this is a spot that I, I really like for Cole, even though the price isn't where you want it to be. Obviously, you'd want him to be near the FanDuel price, but he's just so much better than the next best guy on the slate, I think. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's anyone around him price-wise that makes me want to do anything else. So at that point, I'm fine paying up. 
Uh, we've mentioned quite a few uh, cheaper stacks that are out there, at least for FanDuel, to make it work pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, Astros bats. Uh, I don't necessarily love some of the pricing, but I'd be hard pressed to not want to grab anything from the top. Like it's just, it's Cole Hamels. Uh, we hated him on opening day. Um, we're gonna hate him again today. Uh, I'm in for Springer. I'm in for Bregman. Give me Altuve. Give me Correa. Give me Marlon Gonzalez. I I'd like, I'd like to grant to get all of the catcher first base eligibility guys on uh, <laughs> on Houston for Fanduel yeah. for four straight if that uh, lineup shakes out, which is. That's something else you don't see that every day. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the Astros bats at the top end. If you have, I'm happy to have the Astros bats with Eduardo Rodriguez. I love the Astros bats here too. Hamels in his first three starts, his hard hit percentage is 38.5. That was his first start against the Astros. Ooh. Then 42.9, then 52.6. So the, the swinging strike stuff is pretty decent. Like the numbers look pretty decent there, but I don't, Think he's going to be able to survive this start against the Astros once again. So, Astros stack for me again. I love Springer, Bregman, Altuve, and Correa, and then Yuli Gurriel if he's in the lineup, batting sixth or in the top six somewhere at 4K on DraftKings. I'll gladly play that, pay that price for him. Yeah. And then Evan Gaddis for 3,600, even if he's batting near the bottom of the lineup. I just I love all these Astros. I I don't really love Cole Hamels. I think he's gonna get crushed. So Astros up there with the Red Sox for my favorite stack. Guriel twenty seven hundred on FanDuel. So if you thought he looked good on DK, man, I need to play on FanDuel more. I think. <laughs> get these cheap it's the guys. same thing I felt yesterday when I played on DK. I was like, I should play on DraftKings more. Well, it's just the, the pricing is so different from site to site. Yeah. You just. There, there doesn't seem to be a, a pattern really on either site with how these guys are priced. Nope, not at all. NBA is usually relatively smooth. Uh, this seems to, to jerk itself around a little bit more. Uh, yeah. I basically, you know, take what you need from the Astros. Feel free to grab as much Garrett Cole as you'd like. Uh, that's the spot to be. Rangers, you don't really want it. Yeah. That was easy enough. Yeah, no, no Rangers. Yeah. All right, Twins and White Sox. This one's interesting. There's a line out, but I don't necessarily buy it. Uh, it has the Twins as overwhelmingly monstrous favorites. 5.1 run implied total, 3.4 for the White Sox. Twins, 68% chance to win. I'm going to assume that Five Dimes and the uh, other sites that have this line are a bit mistaken. Uh, Mejia going for the Twins and Ronaldo Lopez going for the White Sox, but... We've got a man on the ground uh, letting me know that we're probably not going to see this game tonight. <laughs> I, I don't think this one has a really good chance of playing. Uh, it is supposed to start raining here pretty soon. It hasn't started yet. I, I live like 20 minutes away from the Twin Stadium, so pretty close. Um, it is going to – we're going to have a big snowstorm here in the Minneapolis area. So I don't think this one's going to play just – even if it's not snowing at game time, it's it's probably going to get canceled because we're supposed to have a ton of snow tonight, and it's just for, for safety reasons. Um, so I don't think this one plays, but if for some reason it does, uh, like you could make a case for either starting pitcher, I think, because the weather is so bad and so good for pitching. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to like deal with this. It's making the Twins look spectacular from a hitter perspective because of that line, but it just seems so high. Is there a run total? It, yeah, I think it was like, I don't think I picked that, did I? I don't, I don't know if there is a run total. Oh, I had it in as eight and a half. Okay. Well, the wind basically like in. only goes to the Twins when the line is. Minus two twenty or whatever the nonsense is, and that just doesn't feel correct to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I don't like. I'm reading stuff right now about. There's an article in the Star Tribune. How many games will the Twins and White Sox play in this series? One question mark. So, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. 
they might get a game in on Sunday, but it's supposed to be pretty bad. Okay. So, yeah, I'd... unless I something, really... yeah, unless what something changes drastically. Like, I don't know. I don't even know if it's worth talking about the bats here. I, my favorite one was Morrison yesterday. Uh, but really, the, the Twins lefties, I think you could make a case for. Yeah. I just don't think we're going to have to worry about it is the problem. All right, here's the deal, guys. Uh, we're not going to talk about this game. If it seems like it's going to play, tweet us and ask us what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah, Twitter's that's, for. That's perfect. At Ikari, at Josh Engelman. You can find us. We're around. I'm happy to tell you my Twins White Sox thoughts if this game looks like it could happen. But Me too. I'm going to take the weather report from 20 miles outside of the stadium. Yeah. Royals and Angels. Uh, Royals, 4.2 run implied total. Angels, 5 run implied total. That's 58% chance to win uh, for the Angels. Jason Hamill going for Kansas City. Andrew Heaney uh, going for the Angels. Um, I don't have any interest in Hamill, and I think Heaney looks like an absolutely exceptional value play. Yeah, back to these... uh... Back to these cheap Angels pitchers. So Heaney needs some digging, like Tropiano. So if like if I'm excited about Heaney, you'll see him in the, the spotlight article, the spotlight pitcher article that comes out in a, in a few hours. Um, so he he had one very good start last year, and then four that were decent to not so great. Uh, I want to kind of see what people do with him, if he's going to be chalky like Tropiano was last night. Completely different pitcher, but he's got a good swinging strike rate. Uh, in those five starts last year, 13.5. The Royals lineup, we're not really scared of. There are a few lefties, not a ton of power outside of Solaire and Merrifield. I think we talked about this a couple days ago. Sounds like I'm repeating myself. Yeah, I, I get that feeling every day now. <laughs> yeah, and it, it is a little bit worrisome that there's wind blowing out right now to left field, and he's a lefty. So... It, it's another risky spot. Tropiano was the GOAT last night. Um, I don't know if I want to double down with Keeney, but the price is really good, and I think he's pretty talented. Yeah, I, I like Heaney a lot. Um, I don't know. I think I touched on it uh, the last time we talked about Heaney, but uh, I had him for like 15 years in an Angel season in a video game, so uh, I've got like a special bond with him. Uh Ended up paying him like a healthy amount of money to be my ace for a, for a while. So uh, he's my dude. Um, as a second DK starter, like with 58% chance to win, I mean, that looks great. Uh, if you really want to go after all of the expensive bats. So if you're looking for like, uh, hell, an Angels, Red Sox, who am I missing? Astros, like you can, you can stack most of those high quality or more expensive bats up with Heaney on FanDuel and get whatever you'd like. Um, I won't have too much of Heaney just because like there's just so much salary left over and because I like Cole enough that um, he'll fill in and has a much higher ceiling. Um, but I'm in for Heaney for sure. Uh, I'm in for some of the Angels bats. Uh, Jason Hamill, not a guy that I'm super worried about. Do I like yeah. any Royals? Probably not. Moose Tacos, as always, but mostly just because I like saying that. <laughs> I'll roster him just to like tweet out Moose Tacos if he goes yard or something. Uh, Duda, you know, is fine. Twenty seven hundred for Duda. On uh, now, why, why am I talking about this? He needs a lefty. Don't don't get Moose Tacos and don't get Duda and don't listen to me right now. <laughs> just one of those days. Well, maybe um, maybe Mustakas will come up super high in your model again. Yeah, that's true. Lefty, um, lefty. he donged the last time yes that he, happened. Yes, he so. did. He, you know what? He's gonna come up a little bit on DK. Yeah, <laughs> I can just tell from like looking at it that he will. I'm, I'm sure he will. Well, it won't be too much just because there won't be any royal stacks really to to back him up for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm in for Trout tonight. Uh, I know it's righty righty, but it's also Hamill. Hamill gives up a lot of home runs, doesn't he? Uh, I I don't know if he gives up a lot of home runs, but I I certainly want to stack against him. Yeah. No, he he's not great against either hand. Is just no, look at his not. XFIP. XFIP is just like a catch-all stat for how how good pitchers are against 
um, either hand. So 466 against righties, 513 against lefties. So a little bit worse against lefties. Um, yeah. There's not much to get excited about with Hamill, even for 5,700. And he does give up uh, quite a bit of power, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, so the LA guys, it seems like we've stacked LA or been interested in stacking LA for like a week straight. It's, and it's, really, it's basically every day. Yeah, it's and their pricing is still fine on DraftKings. So you got Kinsler for thirty nine hundred, hit a leadoff home run yesterday. Um, so it looks like he's pretty healthy. Trout for fifty six hundred. Ian Kinsler. Let's be clear here. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> um, Trout. Don't need to talk about him really. Upton for forty seven hundred against a righty. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Cozart is the one guy I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Uh, pay up is, there. Yeah, so he doesn't have quite the power that the top three do. Pujols is 3,600. I'll just find a, another first baseman, even if I'm stacking L.A. Um, Calhoun, I think, makes for a nice play for 3,100 sure. on DraftKings. And then maybe my favorite play in this entire game is Otani. Otani. Yeah. yeah. Like, he was he was like 7% yesterday, and Trout was 30. Like, I'm not saying play Otani over Trout, but it just goes to show you that – People aren't playing Otani yet, and he's been one of the best hitters in the MLB. Like, he's top five in average exit velocity. He's just squaring it up seemingly every time he hits the ball. Yeah. So play him for 4,600 if you can, especially in an Angels stack. I couldn't agree more. Um, Kinsler, only 2,900 on FanDuel. Haven't moved his price at all. Uh, I'm in for that. Yeah. I was in yesterday. That's why he made the spotlight hitters. I'm in again today. Because, uh, you know, Jason Hamill's Jason Hamill. Yeah, stack him up. Like, Angel's definitely a top three stack up there with Houston and Boston for me. Yeah, they look they look great here. Uh, not much to fear coming out of uh, Kansas City. Yep. Ooh, this one. Dodgers and D-backs. Uh, Dodgers, 3.9 run implied total. Diamondbacks, 3.4, which shockingly low. 56% chance to win for the Dodgers. Kenta Maeda going uh, for L.A. Grinky going for the D-backs. Um, uh, I prefer Maeda on DK. I prefer Grinky on FanDuel, oddly enough. Uh, I don't really like either of them more than Garrett Cole, so I would guess my exposure to both will be relatively low. Yeah, that's what I'm having trouble getting passes Garrett Cole. So these guys are both pretty expensive on DraftKings for what they are. Granky 11-3. I think you can make a case for him over Cole and take a little bit of savings. But while these Dodgers haven't really hit that well, I am scared of them <clears throat> heating up at some point. Granky does have some issues on the road. Um, at least he has in the past. I don't know if they, they've been put behind. But... Guys like Bellinger and Seager and Pui and Grandal, they, they just scare me a little bit for a right-handed pitcher like Granke is. Um, it will be a contrarian play to play Granke over Garrett Cole. Yeah. So in a tournament, I could get behind it, but I, I just don't really have much interest in this game all around. No, neither do I. Um, it's going to be hard for me to get to any hitting in this game uh, unless it was just like as a full fade of one of the pitchers, but I don't really see that as something viable. You know, they're both good. Um, I don't really want to touch much of anything. I can see it already that Kettle Marte is going to pop up a lot for me when I run it just because of his price point. Um, I will be less than enthused about that, although it paid off for me the last time. But, yeah, I don't... There's no, this is the lowest combined total on the board. It's obviously the best overall pitching matchup on the board. Um, I think that makes them sort of negate each other. I don't want to choose between the two. It's kind of a coin flip. So I'll probably not have much here. Yeah. Um, the one bat that I do like, if if he goes, is Alex Avila for 3,000 on DraftKings. Okay. He's just... He just crushes righties. Like he, he strikes out a ton, but when he makes contact, he's got a 54% hard contact percentage since the start of last year. And 
he's three thousand, so I think it's a pretty good price for him. If I can't get up to Gaddis or someone else that I like, I don't really like a lot of catchers today. Now that I think of it, but Avila would be the one guy that I do like in this game. Uh, Avila minimum salary on Fanduel. Obviously, you're not playing yeah. a solo catcher, but um, mm-hmm. interesting full punt at the the catcher first base position for no salary whatsoever. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, but uh, don't get too cute and try to grab too many hitters in a in a full on pitching matchup. Right, It'll be very contrarian. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Mariners and A's. Uh, Mariners 4.1 run implied total A's 4.2 uh, 48% chance to win for the Mariners it's uh, Mike Leake going for Seattle and Andrew Triggs going for Oakland um, Leake is a guy I liked eight years ago I don't like him um, as a fantasy pitcher tonight and uh, Triggs is not a guy that I'm going to have any part of either so I'm a, I'm a no-go on the pitching yeah I think I'm a no-go as well um the, the Mariners are tough. Trees would probably be a guy I would consider on a different slate. There's some weather to be concerned about here and wind blowing out, it looks like. So while the team totals aren't super high, a lot of red flags, and the Mariners aren't really a team that I want to target against for pitching. Um, Seager is 3,100. Maybe would consider him. Or Cano, but Cano's 4,500 on DraftKings. So keep an eye on the weather in this game. Not a ton of hitters that I like from the Mariners, but there are some that I like from Oakland. I'm in for right. Matt Joyce. Yeah, Matt Joyce, um, Jed Lowry, and Matt Olson. Like the top five, really, for Oakland, I think would be a super contrarian stack. Yeah. And Leak is 147th in the Wist for Swing stat that I look at out of 151. So he's down there in Martin Perez and Chris Tillman territory. Yay. Great yeah. great great spot to be, Mike. Yeah. Just some of the worst pitchers, uh, for DFS at least, and yeah, the best yeah. pitchers to stack against. Yeah, Joyce, uh, two hundred dollars cheaper on DK tonight. If he does lead off, um, he'll be a really, really nice play as a, yeah. a lefty righty matchup lead off yeah. hitter. So I like yeah, I like the A's quite a bit here actually. So I'm, I might talk myself into some A's, or at least maybe a couple bats. I really like Jed Lowry at 3,400 yeah. at a second second base position. <laughs> Lowry, $400 cheaper on DK than FanDuel. Marcus Semien, $500 cheaper on DK than FanDuel. Yeah, so stack them up on DK, and you don't have to play them over on FanDuel. Get some, get some Red Sox or get some Astros. Yeah, yeah you range. don't really want any part of the A's on FanDuel outside of Matt Joyce. Yeah. And I don't really have much interest in any of the Mariners on FanDuel either. Uh, I mean, if you want to be real weird, go ahead and grab Dan Vogelbach for 2100 and hope for the best. But that's just... I'm not really serious. <laughs> <laughs> Final game of the night. Padres and Giants. Padres, 4.1 run implied total. Giants, 4.2. If you're paying attention, that looks very similar to the Mariners and A's. Uh Tyson Ross going for the Padres, 49% chance to win. Ty Block going for uh, San Francisco. I don't want um, either of these guys. You looking at any pitching here? No, no <laughs> pitching here, definitely not. Um, Ty Block is another guy that's in the bottom in with for swing. He's actually only ahead of Martin Perez. Outstanding. 4.9 projected Ks per nine from uh, Steamer, so... I'm yeah. not sure he'd strike me out right now. He, he, yeah, he just cannot miss any bats, but he is pretty good at limiting hard contact. However, righties can definitely get to him. Jose Perella for 3,400, Hunter Renfro for 3,700, and Christian Villanueva for 3,400. Those are three guys that I have a little bit of interest in. I don't know that I'll get to the Padres stack because of the ballpark. It will be pretty contrarian, Yeah, but... Um, I actually like bats on both sides in this game, which is weird in this park uh, with these two teams. Yeah, but um, I kind of, I'm kind of with you. <laughs> yeah, who, who do you like for the Giants? Um, I mean, Panic and Belt, if they're going 1-2 to start, would be where I would start, and then I would just sort of naturally grab McCutcheon. They're kind of low-priced tonight, 
Panic twenty eight hundred on FanDuel, Belt twenty four hundred, uh, McCutcheon three thousand, Posey thirty two hundred, Longoria twenty five hundred. Like in the weirdest way possible, you can do a one to five stack um, for the Giants, but it's not the best implied total. They're playing in San Diego, so obviously not the best park. It all runs sort of very counterintuitive to the logic of it all, but I think the price is what's bringing it back into play. Um, I don't get the sense that this would be a terribly high-owned uh, stack combination. So if you want to be unique, I think grabbing some Giants bats would be a, a nice differentiator for you. Yeah, Ross, um, Tyson Ross is one of the worst pitchers over the last few years in preventing steals too. So he's, like, I was looking for Giants speed guys if they have any, and like Ponick doesn't really steal much. I think he had a few small bases last year. McCutcheon had 11 in 2017. Gregor Blanco can steal, but if he's batting eighth, you can't really mess with that for me. Uh, he is 2,400, though. So if he's batting like leadoff, which I know he did a bunch of times last year, then maybe you could play Gregor Blanco. Yeah. Um, so I was looking for speed, but... <laughs> Not the team for it. Yeah. Yeah, Belt and Ponick, though. Those would be the two guys, really the top three. And then Blanco, if he's somehow leading off. Yeah, in a weird way, I think the bottom of the order might sneak into being okay here. If we look, the on base, projected on base percentage for the first four guys for the Giants, 350, 366, 366, 376. All four, well, Hosmer is a 352 for the Padres. Otherwise, everybody else is above that. And everyone, like, the next highest on base percentage for the Padres is 313. Nope, 316. So, like, I can see a scenario where the Giants just keep getting the top of their order on and Ross is pitching from the stretch and, you know, not getting the best stuff. So, like, it could be a nice night for, like, Longoria, Brandon Crawford, where they're getting a lot of at-bats with guys on um, because that top part of the order should be... Like, they should be regularly on base throughout this game, comparatively speaking. Yeah, I don't mind it. Um, I don't know that I'm going to go out of my way to stack this game, really. But No, 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 no. And this game will probably be, like, kind of forgotten. So yeah. Nobody likes the – well, I like the late-night hammer, but nobody likes waiting for all their bats. So there will be some guys that get a, a little bit of ownership here, but I think Perello is probably my favorite guy in this game for 3,400. I would say belt for me. Okay. 2,400 on FanDuel, hitting in the two-hole. Um, you know, with McCutcheon, Posey, Longoria right behind him, like, he could get knocked around a little bit if, you know, belt leads off, or, you know, belt starts off, gets on base. You know, I wouldn't want McCutcheon, Posey, Longoria to be the next three guys I had to face um, right. after that. So I would say belt would be my guy. Uh, I, I definitely want to have at least one or two like heavy, heavy giant stacks just for something to like root for at ten o'clock tonight. And I, like I don't hate it. It's not just because I want to have something fun to do at eleven thirty tonight. <laughs> I think that's it. I think we just got through just an absolutely monstrous slate. Yeah, Friday MLB slates are they get a little bit old. Um, yeah, it's nice to have some split slates sometimes but this wasn't even the 15 gamer like we'll have some 15 game slates this year where yep just a, a marathon where you almost have to cross out like four or five games just to to get the show in that's fine by me <laughs> or at least talk about it for only a couple minutes instead of five six minutes yeah i don't even know how long we've been going here but it feels like probably a while yeah 13 games People, it's it's Friday. People are taking off work. They're going to golf or sledding if you live in Minneapolis. Or the eye doctor if you're my wife. <laughs> She's off today. I've got my parents coming in town in like the next couple hours, so. Oh, you'll have a jam-packed weekend, huh? I will. It's uh, We've got like a festival going on in town, so that's usually pretty fun. Sort of. I'll eat some fried Oreos. That's basically the only thing that I care about. Fried Oreos. It's the greatest thing that I've ever put in my mouth. Really? <laughs> yeah. 
so like the cookie part of it melts it doesn't hold like the same structure that it does yeah. as an oreo it, it so it turns like it turns the cream of the oreo into like even creamier cream <laughs> and then it turns the cookie part almost into like creamed cookie which you know could be hard to get to mentally but it's phenomenal Oh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Oreos, so I, I'd give it a try. Uh, I, I wish that I can get you one of these, like, hot, sprinkled with some powdered sugar, like, as soon as I, I get one. I wish I could just... Amazon, whenever you get, like, drones and stuff, and I can deliver food, you know, a thousand miles away from my house, <laughs> let's do that, because they're great. Go out of your way to try a fried Oreo. I'm sure they have it at the Minnesota State Fair. So that I'll have to check that sounds like a great summer. possibility, yeah. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. All right, 100 lineups with a four-team stack involved. Um, Boston is far and away the most popular stack coming out of here, and then the Nats looks like they're running number two. Yeah, I wonder if the Nats go kind of over overlooked, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. like I, I completely forgot about the Nats. We talked about them first, so maybe other people will play them, but... I just sort of forgot about them. I just had LA, Boston, and Houston on my radar, really. Yeah. I mean, this is going to look a little bit different because, you know, Eduardo Rodriguez is not going to get 75 of 100 lineups, but it's coming out with Rodriguez, Velasquez, and Cole, and that's that will be my top three combination of pitching. But tons of Boston, lots of bets, Martinez, Devers, Jackie Bradley. Um, you're getting the Nats stack. Uh, a bit of an angel stack looks to be there. Um, I'm happy with that spread. You know, I need to play with exposures quite a bit, but it's hard to not want to have a bunch of Boston, obviously. They're great yeah. out there for a reason. Like, you know, you can play the chalk and still be different. Yeah. So, I like, there's like this narrative in DFS where, oh, you, you got to fade the chalk every every slate or whatever and you can't play the highest on stack in mlb because it's so variant um and there there is some truth to that but i think boston's going to be really good chalk so whatever if you want to leave off one of the big bats and hope you hope they don't go off like if you want to leave off a, a jd martinez or if you want to leave off the, the cheap guy that everyone will have mitch moreland then you're still playing chalk but you're you're differentiating yourself a little bit yeah of course so. I've never understood the that sort of thought process. You can, you don't have to have a two percent owned guy in every single slot. Like it's not exactly. You can get a unique lineup very easily with two changes, two guys that are that are down uh, in the ownership list, and you get a full unique lineup. Exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Like you. Like I play chalk quite a bit in in NHL, and it's been really profitable for me because my lineup construction is a lot different every night. Yep, I'm with you. So, same thing, same thing in MLB. So I just wanted to to say that just because Boston's going to be chalk doesn't mean you cannot play them. Hundred percent agree. All right, DK now. Whoa, there we go. Yeah, surprise, surprise, a ton of Boston ton of gnats not like oh, it would be terribly I different love it. i love it where are the angels it's a good question uh, so there's trout so when trout. i grab i'll grab trout to see i wish you could grab like i wish i could select just stacks mm -hmm. instead of just individual people need more otani <laughs> so pitching lots of eduardo rodriguez which makes sense i mean my numbers love him very small amount of coal it, relatively speaking only 18 of the 100 lines it's a balance of mats and heaney velasquez so that's surprising to me yeah. i thought there would be a lot um, more garrett cole in this hmm. I, I it's probably because eduardo rodriguez looks so good on paper with the big favorite the, the low team total for boston yeah and you know, he's got really good stuff, like I said. Like, he's, he's not a bad play at all, but um, he is volatile. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're making your lineups. Like, he could go out there and throw six innings and 
throw 75 pitches and mow through everyone. Or he could throw 92 pitches again in three and two thirds, and then you're getting 12 points out of him instead of a, a big outing from Cole, which I expect. Uh, not loving the, the Angels stack on DK. Barely getting to it. That's fair. A um, lot, of, lot of trout <laughs> one off, but not a lot of trout in a, in a package deal. It's I wonder, just, it's so much Boston. Yeah, I wonder if that's that's the reason, just because there's so much Boston. That makes and, me interested in the Angels even more, though. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I'm with you. Alrighty, guys, that is it. Um, we do have a we do have something to plug, and it has nothing to do with baseball. Oh yes, the the showdown. Yeah. So on Fanduel, we're running a contest. If you go to fanduel.com slash awesomeo, uh, we're running a, a single game contest uh, for NBA for uh, Pelicans and Blazers tomorrow. So uh, three guys that beat Osimo, um have the chance to win a free contest entry uh, at FanDuel. So if you go to fanduel.com slash awesomeo, and I'll have that link in the... Uh, below the you know oh my god i can't even talk i'll have that link below the video uh, if anybody wants to try to to join that up but we will both be in the tournament as well uh my co-host in the live show chris spags will yeah. also be in here so i'm coming to beat every single one of you um i need to redeem myself for uh, the contest we ran for the masters can't come at me for basketball this is the one that i'm coming to clean up i'm coming for the boss man too um, oh yeah you Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think I think you might be the favorite in this one. Out outside of Osimo, um, I am certainly not the favorite to <laughs> to win this in terms of the staff. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. So come join that. It'll be fun. Um, you know, talk smack to us on Twitter. I know I'll probably talk smack to people on Twitter. <laughs> oh, if I take down the NBA one, I I'll for sure be calling some people out. I think we opened a second one for the Masters, or am I wrong? Did we? I don't know. I, th I, I think there was talk about it. I never saw it because I, okay. I was out of pocket for the weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a single game contest on FanDuel. So if you play at FanDuel, uh, come check it out. Come join. If you don't play at FanDuel, come play it anyway. Um, it's a contest against uh, everybody that uh, has anything to do with the site. So it should be fun. Yes. Uh, that's it for baseball, though. Uh, we'll keep... Er, if you have questions about that Twins game, if it doesn't get postponed, hit us up on Twitter. Otherwise, you know, thanks for uh, thanks for being here with us. Like and subscribe to the video. Growth has been great. We couldn't be happier with it. Um, that's all I got. You got anything else? Yeah, check out the uh, the spotlight articles coming out later today. Uh, we'll have yes, do that. The pitchers one for MLB, and I believe you'll be covering the hitters and stacks. Yes, hitters and stacks will be out right after his pitchers article. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, NHL was a big night last night. If you read my article and played the plays, you probably made a lot of money because I, uh, I don't know, I had a good night. So if, if you read what I wrote and took some of it to heart, hope you made money, and we'll try to do it again tonight with the stacks and the spotlight players. There Three games go. tonight for NHL. And then make sure you catch Josh's live show with Chris. It's a lot of fun. I caught some of it last night, so I'll be in chat, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I spotted it scrolling by there. Um, yeah, live show tonight uh, starting at 6. Uh, we won't be doing a live show Saturday or Sunday, so uh, you know, go enjoy your weekend. Um, but we'll be back then Monday for another live show. Uh, and that's all I got. So best of luck tonight, guys. We'll Good talk luck. to you later.